Hello and welcome to our Meet the Candidate special. I'm your general manager at Medfield TV, Brett Poirier. We are interviewing all the, spe the uh, special candidates here uh, for the state senate election coming up. Lucky enough, we have state senate candidate Paul Feeney with us. Paul, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks so much, Brett. Happy to be here. Yeah, this is great. Uh, so tell me a little bit about <coughs> yourself, where you're from, what's your family like? Sure, yeah. Well, I was uh, born in Boston. Uh, I grew up in the Jamaica Plain uh, in Roslindale neighborhoods of Boston. Um, started dating a girl from West Roxbury, uh, my high school sweetheart. We got married uh, in 2001. Uh, lived in West Roxbury and Dedham, and you know it was time to buy a house in 2004. And we we uh, found uh, our little Cape, uh, our dream home down in Foxborough, where uh, we decided to settle. And it was a wonderful community. Um, so we've been living there since 2004. Um, my wife Laura is a, uh, a family child care provider. She's been doing it her uh, her entire career since she got out of college and. You know, we were happy to open up a, a child care center in our home. Uh, so she does that, small business owner, and, uh, and, and I've been in Fox Pro, uh, like I said, since then, and just a wonderful community. And now, what's your education like? Where'd you go to school, <coughs> and uh, how'd you get to the place you're at now? Sure, so uh, I went to Don Bosco High School uh, in Boston. Uh, it closed a few years after I left, and uh, contrary to some people's opinion, it wasn't because I was at Don Bosco that it closed, <laughs> but uh, it was a, a great school. Um, Graduated from there and, and had my heart set on, on going to college. Uh, unfortunately, had a difficult decision with, uh, with my parents at the time um, about financial aid and, and what we couldn't, couldn't afford. Uh, and, and I remember my dad at the time just saying, hey, you know, look, I, I want to help you out, but we don't have the means, and uh, I think you're going to have to get into the workforce. So that's what I did. I went to, uh, went to work right out of high school, started landscaping for a year and, and uh, mowing lawns and, and doing what I could, and then uh, went to work for the telephone company, uh, driving a truck overnight. Um, you know, all across Massachusetts, worked a night shift and studied and got into, uh, uh, you know, different jobs and, and technical jobs. And uh, since then, I've been, you know, going to school off and on, taking some college classes like a lot of adults, trying to piece it together uh, online with uh, Cornell University uh, Labor Studies and uh, a couple of classes at UMass Boston. I tell you what, that's... Uh it's going to be a similar story to what a lot of people are saying with the way education is now. So, Yeah, it's difficult. I mean, it's, it's one of those things. And I think a, a college degree now is what a high school diploma used to be, right? right. It's uh, in order to be able to compete, uh, it's something that's important. But, you know, I, I think I learned a lot entering the workforce as well. And, you know, I understand the value of an education, uh, not just uh, in the fact that you need a degree, but really the value, right? Um, you know, it's difficult now. Trying to uh, trying to work full time, you know. Obviously, my wife and I are very busy, <clears throat> and then going back to school, um, you know, I've been blessed. I've had incredible opportunities, and I think more people should have those opportunities, not only to be able to have the uh, availability to go to school, but the affordability, the accessibility. Absolutely. So now, uh, I've asked this question in each of our interviews. I've gotten kind of different answers from everybody, but mm. everyone's around the same ballpark. Uh, <clears throat> but what do you think a state senator actually does? <laughs> Interesting question. Uh, what should they do or what are they currently doing, I guess, would be the, uh, the, the difference. Look, a, a state senator, obviously uh, in Massachusetts we have a full-time legislature. Um, with that comes a lot of work. There's a lot of bills that are filed, thousands of bills are filed each session. Um, so there's uh, obviously a big piece of what a state senator does is to act on legislation. Um, you know, I, I tend to agree with some people who say that the state senate is a place where good ideas go to die all too often. Um, but you know, there are a lot of bills, there's a lot of different subjects that are taken up. Uh, the state senator needs to be prepared, needs to research legislation, needs to listen to the people of the district to make sure that you make an informed decisions uh, on, on those votes. But it's not just as simple as a yes or no each time a piece of legislation comes up. A state senator, especially from this district, has to be uh, just vehemently independent um, and, and understand that it's not about partisan politics. Um, that you really do have to represent the people of the district. Um, having the bully pulpit to stand up for things, you know, to stand up against pipelines in different communities, to stand up against compressor stations in communities, you know, that's not necessarily yes or no vote in the state senate, but a state senator has to be able to lead, has to be able to use that bully pulpit to stick up for the people of this district. Um, you know, and, and I always had a, uh, a mentor of mine for years who always said, look, any leader, it's not about your ability or your inability, are about your availability and your accessibility. As long as you're available to the people of this district and you listen to them, you'll be an effective state senator. And I think far too often, and I, I get tired of it, um, there's a lot of state senators and state representatives and people in elected office in general 
that don't take that approach, right? It's about politics, it's about political expediency. Uh, I think we need to change that. Yeah. Uh, now, <coughs> what experiences uh, have you had, you know, in your workforce and in everything that's going on? What experiences have you had that's built to this point? What, what makes you experience going into this? Yeah, well, my, my job right now, in addition to being a telephone worker, which uh, I've been doing for 20 years, I'm the legislative director of the IBEW Local 2222. Uh, in short, a lot of letters, a lot of words, but what that means basically is that I advocate for legislation that protects jobs, uh, fights for consumers, uh, and in that capacity, I've had the ability uh, and the opportunity to go and, and uh, testify on certain bills, um, to build relationships with, uh, within the state senate and the state house, uh, and, and you know, municipal officials as well. Um, but to go and advocate for legislation, legislation that, that you know, I, I think would probably be of interest to Medfield uh, TV and, um, you know, a lot of kind of broadband stuff and, and high-tech uh, bills. Um, so I've had the opportunity to do that, to build those relationships. I've seen the way uh, legislation works. Uh, I was the former chief of staff to Senator Jim Timothy. I was his first chief of staff when he got elected. Uh, and, and I always say that, you know, we learned a lot going into that building when Senator Timothy first got elected. But for me, it was it was a graduate level education on 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 how to how to uh, fight for the people of the district. Um, Senator Timothy, you know, has done a great job over the last 13 years. He is a fierce advocate for the people of this district. Um, very independent minded. Um, so that was that's what I learned, you know, from from working for him. Uh, and then in addition to that, I was a, a selectman uh, in Foxborough, so I've seen kind of the other side of government at the municipal level, uh, where a lot of the times it's unfunded mandates and, and certain things that the state passes down without the necessary resources to get it done. Uh, I'm proud of the work we did, uh, I did on the Board of Selectmen uh, in, a, in a tough economic downturn. So, you know, those types of, uh, of professional experiences, but I think more than that though, Brett, it's about our life experiences that kind of form our moral compass and, and drive us to make the decisions we do as leaders. Yeah, that's great. I, I've seen a lot is uh, people running for these big offices, you know, with the selectman experience. Mm. It's an interesting, you know, uh, caveat to your to your experiences where you get the viewpoint of what the town, you know, the effect that you have on each individual town. And I think that that's actually a pretty awesome experience that you have. You know? Yeah, it was very unique. And like I said, I mean, you know, you run for selectman, you run for any office and you say, I want to do this, this, this and this. And then all of a sudden I got uh, sworn in as a selectman and we had that once in a hundred year economic downturn, which, you know, all right, now we can't do any of the things that we talked about doing, um, but we had to weather the storm. It was important. And, you know, we had a, 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 um, a good partner, I think, in the state at the time who, who saw that and understood that. Um, but yeah, municipal government is difficult and I think it, it prepares you well for something like a state senate job. Now, what do you think, uh, when Timothy steps down, what made you want to step into that role? What made you want to run for this office? So, truthfully, I never thought I would be on a ballot again. I had uh, run for state representative uh, as a 28-year-old, I think I was at the time, and uh, ran for a selectman, like I said, served uh, in the board of selectmen in Foxborough. I was the chairman of that board uh, at the end of my term. Um, never thought I'd be back on a ballot. Just wasn't in the plans for Laura and I. Uh, didn't think I'd be there. Um, you know, over the last couple of years, I've been inspired. Um, I was the state director on the Bernie Sanders campaign for president here in Massachusetts, uh, as well as Connecticut uh, and Rhode Island for a period of time. So, um, you know, being involved in that and seeing so many new people come into the fray, so many new people want to stand up, want to fight for things, want to become an active participant in the political process, I've been inspired. And uh, didn't know this he was going to open up. Didn't know Senator Timothy was going to was going to uh, go to a new job. But when he did, uh, the phone started ringing, uh, and people started asking if I was interested. I think it was around Easter weekend, so uh, we took a few days, my my wife and I, to kind of ponder it. Uh, and at the end of the day, I just said, you know what, there's too much at stake. Um, you know, I'm frightened with the the state of of politics these days. Um, I think, especially over the last couple of months, we've seen some incredible divisiveness. Uh, and I think we can do better. And, you know, that's, that's the primary reason why I'm running. We can talk about issues and legislation all day long, but I think we can do better. I think we need a leader that listens to people, that fights for people, and that stands up for our values. One of the most important questions of the day, I think, is why should people vote for you? So mm -hmm. why should they? Ah, well, I'm still, uh, still working on my wife to get her to vote for me, and she knows me the best. Uh, I'm kidding. She's, she's been enormously helpful in, in, uh, in, in, you know, in this campaign and everything I've done. Uh, and a lot of times I'll ask her, kind of from an outsider perspective, Laura, you know me. 
Um, you know, what is it? What is it? Why? What is my pitch, right? How do you sell yourself? And, and I always have difficulty with that. I, I was kind of raised, you know, to be as humble as I could, and um, it's a difficult thing for me to do sometimes. But, you know, like I said, when it comes down to it, we deserve a leader that listens to people, that's not afraid to stand up for people, and that fights for people. I've done that my entire career, Brett. That's what I've done since I started in the workforce. I've looked for ways to help people. Um, you know, it, it, I've been blessed. I've had great opportunities. Like I said, I'm a guy who graduated Don Bosco High School, and I have a little piece of the American dream in Foxborough. I have a nice little cape house. My wife has a business. Um, you know, it's not because, it, obviously, it's because I've worked hard, but it's because I've had opportunities as well. Um, I think everybody should have those opportunities. I've fought for those opportunities for people my entire career. I know you know, that there's this tendency to kind of put on our, our jerseys and say, you know, I'm on this side or I'm on that side, and there's a lot of political divisiveness. Uh, I'm not that person. I'm not that person. I'm somebody who, um, you know, has shown up and able to build bridges, whether it's on the Foxborough Board of Selectmen uh, or through different campaigns I've worked on. Um, but ultimately, you know, I think, I think my life experiences, right, those are the things that drive me, not just where I've worked, but what I've lived through. You know, living through uh, being uh, a, a young guy, uh, living in, in Central Mass, and having our, our water contaminated in my home, and watching my parents get called to action and organize our neighborhood against contaminated well water, um, going out on strike to fight for jobs, jobs like mine that they wanted to move to the Philippines and, and, uh, and offshore. Um, you know, those types of experiences, right? Fighting for people, taking that long drive down to, uh, to Gosnold or other places to try and find treatment for people that were suffering from addiction, my coworkers that I represent. Um, those types of experiences, I think, are what leads to, uh, to, to an effective state senator, somebody who's willing to fight for people, stand up for them, and find solutions. Now, uh, I wanted to ask all those questions first so people can get to know you. So sure. now we got to that one question that everyone always asks is, what party are you running as, and, and why do you feel you fit into that party? <clears throat> I'm running a Democratic primary. I've been a Democrat my entire life. Um, proud Democrat. Um, but I say that with the caveat that uh, it's not always about you know, seeking a Democratic solution or a Republican solution. Uh, it's really about finding kind of, not even the middle ground, fighting for our values, but being able to, to, to create that bridge to find the right solution for people. Um, I'm a Democrat who believes that we should get back to our roots, to Franklin Delano Roosevelt, to John F. Kennedy. You know, our middle class is disappearing. This district is 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 prime example of that. The middle class is being shrunk. It's the Democratic Party I feel that has always that has always uh, uh, sought those solutions and, and and fought for those values that builds the middle class. Uh, I want to stick up for those working families. I want to stick up for the middle class. Um, I'm a union member, but it's not about union and non-union. It's about working people who are fighting to try and uh, survive, who are fighting to stay in a community that they love, who are fighting to raise their families. Um, you know, this is this this district is very unique. It's very distinct. Three kind of separate parts from the north, the middle, and the south, but we're all united uh, among this, these kind of common values. Um, and I think, you know, Democrat, Republican, Independent, we need to be able to come together and, and find solutions. For me, though, look, I'm a Democrat um, because I think that, that the Democratic Party has always been the party that sticks up for, for the regular person, for the working person, for the middle class. And that's, that's who I am. Now, uh, running as a, a Democrat, wanting to communicate with people, wanting to reach out and get to them, how is it that you plan on communicating with people and, and getting to your constituents? Sure. Back to um, that, that reminder I always used to get from a mentor of mine in my life talking about your availability and your accessibility. I think that's A number one. You can't be a state senator and, and live in a box and live in a bubble. <clears throat> I think far too often we see people go up to Beacon Hill, they find themselves in a, in a cave, in a, in a, in a bubble, uh, and that becomes their world. It can't be. Um, it's important to get out into the district. We'll make sure that we have uh, town, uh, town hall type meetings uh, throughout the district uh, uh, regularly. We'll have office hours throughout the district, nine cities and towns. It's important to be at every one of them at different times of the day. Um, and really to bring Beacon Hill to the Bristol and Norfolk district. You know, as I said, I worked the night shift for, for years um, when I started working. And the difficulty is, and some people work in the night shifts, you have, you know, nurses working long shifts, firefighters, um, you know, a lot of different people, you know, a lot of different hours. They can't get to a committee hearing in the middle of the day. 
Um, they can't get to, you know, their state senator's office, uh, you know, at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So it's important for us to bring Beacon Hill to the district, uh, and that's certainly going to be a main priority for me. Now, one of the interesting parts of this uh, election is that obviously the person whose seat it is mm -hmm. uh, is not running. They're stepping down. So uh, what should people voting, what should our, uh, the actual <coughs> residents look for in their candidate as experience, or what should they look for in, in their candidate? Yeah, like I said, Senator Timothy has done an incredible job over 13 years. He's built a great resume uh, of, of not only uh, legislative accomplishment, but really, you know, being the champion of the people in this district. And I think that's important. I don't think we should lose that. Um, you know, my take on it always is, is that the, the uh, residents of the Bristol and Norfolk District should know that they have somebody who's not going to compromise their values, but is always going to seek solutions and what's best for the district above political expediency. This can't be about ambition. It can't be about the next step in a political career. You know, this really has to be about somebody who's going to stand up and fight for people. And I've heard other candidates in this race uh, talk about their experience and talk about, um, you know, what they've done uh, legislatively and, 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 you know, what they've done in politics. That's definitely a, a part of this. But above and beyond that, it has to be about somebody that's going to actually go to work for the people of this district. It's not about our own political careers. Trust me, again, I, I didn't know I was going to ever be on a ballot again. Um, you know, pushing 40 years old now, um, you know, those days are, are behind me. This is about fighting for people of this district. It's about finding, uh, uh, finding a way to fight for our values uh, and working hard. The people of this district should have a senator that works hard for them. It's a full-time senator, which I will be. Um, this people of this district should have a senator that, uh, that prioritizes availability and accessibility and honesty and transparency. That's the type of senator I'll be. Now, uh, it, maybe you have a pretty good insight of what this is going to be because you've obviously worked up at the, uh, the Hill before. But uh, what do you think your first 100 days is going to be like when you get elected? Wow, that's a great question. Um, you know, I, we're in an interesting kind of time uh, in the Mass Legislature, in the cycle right now. Uh, obviously, it's the summer, and I, I, there's not a lot of work, not a lot of stuff going on. Um, once that's over, which is going to kind of coincide with this general election and uh, getting sworn in, that's when you see a real flurry of activity of, of a lot of committees trying to get bills out uh, that can see the light of debate uh, in the chamber. Remember, we get two-year sessions. Next year is the second year of the legislative session. Uh, and once it hits the summer and the budget season, pretty much all those standalone bills, unless they've been given an extension, uh, which they call Joint Rule 10 extension out of committee, unless they've been given an extension, um, they die. So it's going to be a few months, and I think the first 100 days of, of um, uh, you know, if I'm blessed to be, able to, uh, be elected as senator, my first 100 days are going to be a lot of kind of figuring out what those bills are that are important to the people of this district making sure that they come out of committee so that they can see the light of debate. Uh, but the second thing is really, and again, it's, it's a priority and a focus of mine, uh, is to listen to the people of this district. So I would certainly say, well, you know, if elected uh, in, in uh, the primary in September and then in October in the general election, uh, it's going to be my priority to go out to make sure that I'm at every city and town, uh, meeting with the town managers, meeting with the boards of selectmen, meeting, uh, going to town meetings. I know we'll probably have a host of special town meetings in the fall uh, and then again, uh, regular town meetings in the spring, um, but to get out there meeting with the councils down in Attleboro, listening, getting a hold of kind of the things that they have in the pipeline that are important to each city and town, and making sure that we're on top of it to advance that. That's a busy 100 days. Yeah, it is a busy 100 days. <laughs> That's yeah, a lot right. to do and, in 100 days. And, and I would say that I probably uh, would take a couple of days off, maybe somewhere in between. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. I don't think anyone would play. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. right. Uh, now, why are you the best candidate for the state senate? Uh, again, I, I think this is, um, this is an important time in politics. It's an important time for this district. It's an important time, uh, certainly, uh, uh, nationally. And it's an important time in Massachusetts. I've been disappointed in politics um, recently. And one of the things that, that um, I talk about a lot is, you know, the need to have leaders that... Um, you know, that put aside kind of their, their political relationships um, and stand up for people. Um, again, I've done that, and I'm committed to doing that. You know, this is a uh, district that anecdotally people will tell you, oh, it's very conservative, very middle of the road. 
Um, and it is, and the fact that it's 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 very independent independent minded. If you look at our past elections, um, you know this district and, and especially up here in Medfield, uh, very independent in the way that uh, in the way that they vote. But I think there's there's a certain set of values that we all adhere to. Um, nobody, you know, nobody should be afraid um, to be out in our community based on the color of their skin, their religion, whom they love. Uh, and I think too many times nowadays, that's the case. I think there's a lot of hate. I think there's a lot of divisiveness. Um, you know, I'm somebody that, uh, that is not afraid to stand up and fight for people. I fought against bullies my whole life. Um, and I think that's, that's somebody that, um, you know, that, that's something that we need in our next state senator, uh, especially here in this district. We need people to feel comfortable. We need people to feel comfortable that they can raise their families here, that they can riot, retire with dignity here, that they're not going to be priced out of their communities, that seniors are going to be able to stay here after they raise their family for so many years in this district. Um, you know, I think we need a state senator that will fight for our values. Uh, you know, and, and that's what I've done my whole life. I think my track record shows that. And again, it's about our life experiences. I've lived through it. I've lived through it. I've, I know what it's like. You know, to struggle as a as a youngster and and, uh, and not have a lot of means to do a whole whole heck of a lot to work hard to try and build a middle class life, um, and then you know to fight hard to stay there. I think a lot of us are one pink slip away from uh, from poverty too often, um, you know. And we need to make sure we're increasing jobs. I have fought for jobs my entire life. I'll do that as a state senator. We need to fight for each other, stand up for each other, and make sure that people are comfortable in their own homes and in our own communities. Uh, I've, again, I've done that my entire career, and I'll do that as a state senator. A powerful message, in, indeed. Thank you. Uh, we have now, uh, we're going to loosen things up a little bit. Sure. Was, you know, this uh, interview was meant just to get to know you a little bit. So I do have some quick question and answers back uh -oh. and forth. On the hot you. seat? On the hot seat. Right. So we're going to put you best. down. Yeah. So All right. really simply, the first question, mm -hmm. easy, is uh, what's your favorite food? Oh, uh, come on, look at me. I, this, <laughs> I have a lot of favorite foods. Um, I would say I'm a sucker for anything uh, buffalo wings. Anything with buffalo wings, yep. not bad. Uh, favorite sport to watch? Football, definitely, although hockey is coming close. Uh, favorite sport to play? Back in the day, uh, football, uh, when I was in high school. Now, uh, you won't see me on the football field. Maybe the occasional golf game or horseshoes or something like that. Uh, what, uh, what, do you play any instruments? Uh, I like to dabble in, in instruments. I'm a jack of all trades, master of none. I would say probably drums would be the closest. Uh, so what other instruments do you play? You play a bunch then? So I, I've always kind of been that person. I can pick up an instrument and usually, you know, play it by ear a little bit. Uh, I loved guitar growing up. Played a little bit of guitar, uh, drums. Loved to sit down in front of a keyboard every once in a while and just kind of pound away. I sound a lot better to myself than the people around me, <laughs> but I give it a shot. <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, do you have any hidden talents? Hidden talents? Wow. Um, well, I'm a licensed pyrotechnician in Massachusetts, so I've been shooting fireworks shows for the last 20 years. So maybe a hidden talent. Um, you know, not a lot of people do it. Now, you actually just did one this year, right? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, last 20 years, every, every 4th of July, around the, around the 4th, uh, we did three shows this year. I did uh, Wakefield, um, what did I do? Wakefield, Acton, and Haverhill. So, yeah, I've been all over the place doing that. shows down the Cape, uh, up North Shore, out in, uh, you know, Boston Harbor. So it's fun. Now, what's your uh, most used social media site? Definitely Facebook. Uh, trying to get better at Twitter, although I'm not completely uh, efficient at it yet, but definitely Facebook. Now, what's, uh, give yourself a plug. I know you have a Facebook page and uh, I'm assuming like a website or something like that. Yeah, so uh, Paul Feeney for State Senate is our Facebook page. Uh, on Twitter, at Paul E. Feeney, um, uh, which is what the, my uh, family and a lot of friends call me, Paul E. Feeney. So at Paul E. Feeney is a Twitter. Uh, website, votefeeney.com, V-O-T-E-F-E-E-N-E-Y.com. Um, so yeah, we're trying to do everything we can. You'll see me pop up once in a while on Instagram, and I think the campaign team's trying to get me to do a little Snapchat, but we'll see. Yeah, I was just <laughs> saying, we've been, uh, and Medfield TV, we've been following all the candidates and stuff, and you guys all have your Facebook page, so ours is filled with political stuff. There you go, perfect. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of people getting sick of seeing my face and, and other candidates, but it's the only way we can get them out sometimes. So. Absolutely, so what's your favorite team? Uh, I live in Foxborough in the shadow of Gillette Stadium, so without a doubt, New England Patriots. What's your favorite holiday? Fourth of July, obviously shooting fireworks uh, my whole life. I, I've always been uh, a patriotic guy uh, and there's nothing like it. Nothing like the Fourth of July. Uh, what's the last thing you read? Um, let's see, I wanna say Whistle Stop, which was a, uh, a book about uh, interesting stories from presidential campaigns, uh, you know, stories from along the trail. 
Um, haven't done a lot of reading since we started campaigning, uh, but I think Whistle Stop and surely before that, Rogues and Redeemers um, about the Irish in Boston and, and uh, politics. Nice. Uh, describe yourself in three words. Ooh, okay. I think this is the hardest question, this by the is way. A, this <laughs> is a tough one. Um, yeah, I would say uh, loyalty is important to me, so loyal uh, would be probably number one. Um, um, I'd say loyal, uh, independent, independent, um, certainly my own, my own thinker. Um, and I guess if I put a dash in there, it's two words, hardworking. Uh, but if you'll accept that as a third word, uh, I think hardworking would probably be the next one. Yeah, we've given, uh, we've given a few leeways on the <laughs> literal three words. Um, where's your favorite vacation spot? Oh, Cape Cod, definitely Cape Cod. Once I'm through the traffic, once I'm down there, I love it. It's just getting through the traffic down to the Cape. But my wife and I try and get down there each summer, uh, a couple of weekends here and there. And, um, you know, hopefully someday I'll be able to, uh, you know, retire and we'll find a place down there. But um, for right now, I love it. A couple, you know, a couple of nights during the summer down the Cape, sitting on the beach, getting some ice cream, playing some mini golf. It's the best, best thing we can do to relax. Uh, what's, uh, what sport and activities did you do in high school? Uh, so football uh, and track and field, I threw the shot put and discus. Uh, dabbled with the Three Stooges Club, which was a great club uh, at Don Bosco for a little bit. Um, and then, uh, geez, well, I worked. I worked uh, all through high school uh, as a busboy and cleaning dishes at night at a, at a restaurant down the street from my house. Uh, if you win, uh, who's the first person you get up and thank? Uh, without a doubt, my wife. Without a doubt, my wife, Laura, has been very supportive of everything I've done. She's knocking doors with me every weekend. She's, uh, she's making phone calls with me every night. Um, so yeah, definitely her. She's, she's, put, she's put a lot aside. She sacrificed a lot. Uh, and, and she's just been a partner by my side for this entire campaign. And uh, yeah, she, she deserves a lot, uh, a lot of thanks. Uh, we're getting close to the end, but uh, anyone who you would have dinner with in the world? Wow. Um, I have to say probably Pope Francis at this point. Um, I'm a faithful person, um, you know, grew up a, a God-fearing Catholic, kind of have a different understanding of my faith uh, in recent years. And I think, I think the Holy Father has done a great job in, in kind of um, adapting the church to, uh, to a new reality, but at the same time sticking with, with the uh, dogma. And um, yeah, I think he'd be a fascinating person to sit down and, and, and have dinner with. That's a great answer. Uh, your final question, we're going to get you out of the hot seat. Uh, if you had your elevator pitch, why should people <coughs> vote for you? Uh, so again, I, I came to this campaign probably uh, in a different path than most people. Uh, I've certainly had experience in government, working as a chief of staff of Senator Timothy, working as a selectman uh, in Foxborough. Uh, I was blessed to be able to be the labor director and Congressman Stephen Lynch's campaign for the U.S. Senate. Uh, and again, as the, the state director for the Bernie Sanders campaign for president. Um, but I've been inspired by what I've seen over the last couple of years with good people coming together and marches and, and, and rallies against hate, um, like I saw in Attleboro last week and in, in, in Foxborough just the other night. Um, I've been inspired by that. Um, you know, the women's march that I saw in January with so many people coming together and standing up for our values. Um, I'm a person who's not afraid to feel. My wife always says that I wear my heart on my sleeve, and trust me, Brett, it's gotten me into trouble more times than it hasn't. Um, but I think that's important. I think that's important. I've worked hard to fight for people. I've worked hard to stand up for our communities. Um, there's a few things that I want to accomplish when I get, uh, if I'm blessed to be elected uh, senator. You know, one of them is curbing the opiate crisis. I think there's no community immune to that. There's no family immune to it. We need to do everything we can to mandate treatment by insurance companies to make sure that we're not just putting people away for five days, spin drying them and letting them out, but that we actually have to offer treatment, long-term treatment, <clears throat> transitional treatment, treatment that actually helps them solve uh, an addiction crisis. <clears throat> I think it's important that we fight for our public schools. There's a commission report that says we're one to two billion dollars uh, short underfunding our public schools. That's unconscionable in Massachusetts. We need to do everything we can to change the formula to make sure that we're fully funding our schools. Um, we need to increase jobs. You know, this area sells itself. We're a great region of the state. This is an area where a lot of people want to live. Let's increase local jobs. Let's fight for a green economy. Let's incentivize companies that can't afford to be in Cambridge or that are running out of real estate in Cambridge to come to this area, to come to Medfield, to come to Walpole, to come to Foxborough, um, to do their research and the development. You know, we can do a better job uh, in, in bringing local jobs to this area, and that's something I want to fight for. Um, 
making sure they're protecting our environment. Again, my experience uh, as, a, as a young child, uh, watching my parents fight for clean water in my neighborhood was left an indelible mark on me. Um, so, you know, I'm somebody that, it's not an abstract theory. I live through it, and I want to fight for that. And really just fighting for the middle class, fighting for working people, <clears throat> making sure that everybody has a voice on Beacon Hill, not just the well-connected, not the people that have worked there and, 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 and have relationships with other elected officials that, that they need to, uh, to help advance their own priorities, you know, but to really fight for the, for the priorities of the, of the people of this district. Um, so that's kind of, you know, that's the pitch. We've had great success out in the doors. We've talked to thousands of voters. The support has been overwhelming. I am so humbled by everything that I've heard out there so far. Um, but I think the times are changing. It's time for us to send a message that politics as usual is no longer acceptable. That people need to be fought for in this district. That people need to be stood up for. And that we need somebody who actually fights for those values, who stands up for them. Again, I've done that my entire career. I hope to do that as the next state senator from this district. Um, and we got a lot of work to do before we get there, um, but it's really been overwhelming going door to door and talking to so many voters. You know, hopefully, uh, hopefully uh, uh, they come out on September 19th, and that's Brett. Whether that's for me or anybody else, it's important. They're talking about a really, really low turnout in this election, uh, and I think we need to send a message. We need to send a message uh, on September 19th that people are engaged, they are involved, and they will vote. And then we'll do that again on October 17th. And whatever that decision is on this district, then I will be the right one. Because the people here in Medfield and the people throughout this Bristol and Norfolk are salt of the earth, good people. And when they're involved, we can make a difference. Paul Feeney, we're going to get you out of the hot seat. Awesome. Thank you so Thank much you. for joining us. Great, Brett. Thank you so it's much. It's been excellent. Uh, this is the last interview that we have done, and that sums up all of the state Senate candidates that you need to know about. Medfield TV, we want to thank all of you for watching, and uh, catch us next time. But I think there's, there's a certain set of values that we all adhere to. Um, nobody, you know, nobody should be afraid um, to be out in our community based on the color of their skin, their religion, whom they love, uh, and I think too many times nowadays, that's the case. I think there's a lot of hate. I think there's a lot of divisiveness. Um, you know, I'm somebody that, uh, that is not afraid to stand up and fight for people. I fought against bullies my whole life, um, and I think that's, that's somebody that, um, you know, that, that's something that we need in our next state senator, uh, especially here in this district. We need people to feel comfortable. We need people to feel comfortable that they can raise their families here, that they can riot, retire with dignity here, that they're not going to be priced out of their communities, that seniors are going to be able to stay here after they raise their family for so many years in this district. Um, you know, I think we need a state senator that'll fight for our values, uh, you know, and, and that's what I've done my whole life.